Welcome to William Newton News Watch. I am the Director for Marketing, Sarah Johnson, and today we're just going to provide you with a few updates about what's happening at the hospital, and we have three guests here today that are going to share some news with you. So uh, we're hosting a watch party right now on Facebook. So if you have any comments, make sure you leave them here and we will either respond to them live or we will follow up with them on our next show. So William Newton Hospital has been preparing for a potential surge of coronavirus patients. Um, we just wanna let you know that we are ready and we're prepared and we're here for you. We want you to know that it's okay for you to keep your appointments and procedures. Um, the hospital really is a safe place to be with all of our extra precautions we have in place. So talk to your doctor about what your risk is for coming in for any type of uh, visit that you have scheduled. And speaking of physicians, we have Dr. Todd Peters on the call today, and he is joining us from his office. And I'm gonna move over to Todd. All right, hi there. Hi Sarah. <laughs> um, so tell us how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected you and your patients. Well, it has changed our uh, process in the office. We do have people come in. Uh, we still see patients every day. We try to limit to patients who need their vaccinations. Say there's uh, you know, a two month old baby or a, say a newborn needs to be seen. We want them to come in when you get to the, the pavilion or you're in the, you know, before you come in, you'll call the office and then we'll have you uh, get roomed right away. And before you come into the building, we check your temperature to make sure, and we also screen you to make sure you didn't have any exposure to coronavirus. Um, additional precautions we're doing are we're wearing uh, surgical masks and the staff checks their temperature every day as well. So every day I get my temperature checked just like you do when you come into the building. In addition, we are seeing sick patients. If they are needing to be seen in the office, we do see them here. Say they have an ear infection, we wanna see their ear, we have to have them come in, unfortunately. Um, if it's something that we can do over a teleconference, a video um, telemedicine, we do have that feature now as well. Um, and those are the main things. We are cleaning everything very thoroughly which we've done in the past, but with this coronavirus, we are more aware of it and more, um, just more careful in general. Yeah. So um, you mentioned telehealth, and mm -hmm. that's uh, one thing that a lot of our providers are utilizing more. So tell us a little bit more about how uh, telehealth might work for your patients. Yes. So if you're one of our patients, we well, you call in, say you want to have a telehealth visit, we will have you uh, either send you an email or we'll have you download the, um, there's a portal application you can get from your app store. And then we dial in at a scheduled time and we do video chat and we talk about your child's condition or questions you had. And then we can form a treatment, a diagnosis and treatment plan. Uh, we've had this offered through our vendor for about three weeks now. We've gotten more convenient, more uh, comfortable doing it. It's definitely something new for us, but we're very glad that it's happened when it's happened because we definitely want people to stay at home. We don't want them to come in the office unless we absolutely have to have them here. All right. And you are also on the board for the William Newton Healthcare Foundation. And one of the things the foundation has done is established an emergency fund for COVID-19. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, there is a new, uh, it's a COVID-19 um, foundation fund, if you will, where you can donate medical equipment. You can donate, uh, you know, a lot of what the foundation does is raise money to buy things. And right now this new COVID-19 fund is to help raise money to buy equipment specifically for fighting the coronavirus, uh, equipment for the hospital, for, the, uh, for employees, for patients. And so it's a new thing that's been just this week and we wanted to get the word out while we're here, um, you know, here talking today. So we appreciate you bringing that up, Sarah. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Peters. Um, another employee of the hospital who has been working with the community on donations is Cheryl Brock, and she is our director of volunteers. So I'm going to go over to Cheryl here. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> um, so 
you were mentioned in the local news article in the Cali Courier Traveler um, about your volunteers being home and how it's a little lonely here at the hospital for you. So can you tell us about that? It is lonely. Um, the volunteers are pretty much the first people I greet every day because uh, we start our rounding in the mornings. Uh, we have volunteers at the front desk and at the snack bar and surgery waiting and our Winfield Healthcare Center. And then they also come in for a lot of other uh, special specialty services that we have here at the hospital. So it's been pretty lonely without them here. But you have been, you know, receiving a lot of support from the community as well. So um, can you mention a few of the donations that you've received from the community and from your volunteers? Absolutely. Our community has just shown tremendous support. Um, within a matter of days, um, Kathy Wobblemuth with the Walnut Valley Quilters Guild called asking about cloth mask. And this is just one of the many samples that has, has come in. And it's just been so awesome. We have had hundreds of um, masks donated to the hospital that the staff are using. And they're helping to preserve um, the masks that we already utilize. They just wear the cloth mask over those. We've had um, surgical caps and hats come in, um, many different styles, and I know that there's some more already on the way. Um, just yesterday, um, Building Control Services provided the staff with a wonderful meal um, that was delivered all over the hospital. It was so nice. And I know the staff has also received um, fudge and pizza and a lot of prepackaged food, um, which has just been, it's just been amazing, the community response that we've had. Um, a lot of our volunteers have helped um, sew the mask. So I know like Kathleen Lewis and Janine Van Meter and Catherine Tisdell and and uh, Kay Bradbury, and I'm probably going to miss somebody because there's so many people that have contributed. And I know um, Mary Jarvis with her friends, Jan Hathaway, and, and their crew have um, also provided lots of masks. Chris Rogers with Our Home Health is one of those as well. Um, so it's just been, it's just been great response. Anything that we've asked for, um, they get right on and they start working on. And, and it's just, it's been we just have, you know, a lot of blessings in our community. It's, it's pretty awesome. Well, is there anything else that you want the people out there to know, if, you know, if they want to do something to help out, what can they do? Um, right now, uh, we can't accept like any baked products um, or home baked products, but we can have prepackaged foods. And I know uh, Catherine Tisdell, one of our volunteers brought in, um, a huge variety that we were able to share with all shifts of the hospital and we've had other people who've brought in um, some prepackaged you know candies and stuff like that and I know that the staff really appreciates that because um, like you have mentioned we haven't actually had any positive COVID patients come through but we have had lots of um, patients that have come in showing the symptoms that we're still taking care of and, and treating in our isolation unit. And it's just been um, amazing that we had the support from the community so that we could provide stuff for our staff. All right. Well, thank you, Cheryl. Um, and you mentioned the isolation unit. That's one of the things that our incident command team has put together in order to uh, separate any potential uh, coronavirus patients from the rest of our patient population. And Debbie Mars is on our call today, and she is also on the incident command team. So I'm going to toss it over to her. Debbie, what is it like being on the incident command team and what, what is it like here at the hospital? Um, it is amazing. It is amazing um, to be a part of that. You, you have no idea um, what details go into um, getting a facility ready um, to care for patients uh, above and beyond this virus is, um, you know, we learn something new every day. And um, I can say uh, the incident command team uh, actually started meeting in February. I uh, did not become a part of it until th about the middle of March. And um, it's um, the recommendations that came down from CDC as far as um, how to care for patients in isolation and uh, the recommended recommendations of those such 
um, because the incident command team brought in the nurse managers, um, we were actually ahead and uh, implemented uh, the recommendations of the CDC prior to even getting them. It's just amazing the care that our facility goes to and the length to care for our community and our patients and to keep them safe. Um, and, you know, the devil is in the details. Um, just one little minute detail affects three and four different departments. Um, but it's amazing the way the team has come together and worked together. Well, um, you work in obstetrics. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what, what would you like for like new moms or expecting moms out there to know, um, you know, as they are caring for their newborns or getting ready to have one of their own? Um, well, I'd like to share with um, our moms that are expecting that we have uh, went above and beyond as well in the OB unit to keep our patients safe. Those we have actually walled off, uh, temporarily walled off the um, south side of the unit to keep a person under suspicion and or positive for COVID in that area um, and set up a separate nursing station so the one nurse can be isolated from the rest of the floor to keep every uh, that patient and our oncoming patients safe. And um, let's see, I lost my train of thought there, but um, we're doing everything we can to keep patients safe and our staff safe. Um, and those with newborns to keep them safe once you leave the hospital, our main recommendation is um, stay at home. It's with this pandemic, it's not the time to be letting uh, for Aunt Susie to come over and love on this brand new baby. Um, I always say, OB, you come here not because you're sick, but because you're having a life event. And we all want to share that. But um, keep that newborn safe. Newborns are uh, born with a clean slate as far as uh, immune, uh, Im immunities to viruses and that. And so they are not born with the ability to fight this immediately. So we have to keep them first and foremost. Another thing that I wanted to share that the OB department and the facility has done to help um, our expecting mothers is that the facility um, as a rule has a no visitors policy due to this pandemic. We are limiting our laboring moms to one visitor and to help encourage that visitor to stay uh, in the facility and stay safe, we're providing meals for that person. Uh, in the past, we've always provided a free meal for the father or significant other um, as a celebratory uh, thing, but we are now going the extra step and trying to keep our patients safe and providing meals while they're in here in the hospital on the OB floor. I just think that's a wonderful opportunity to thank the patients for uh, abiding by the rules because um, we're just trying to keep everyone safe. Well, thank you, Debbie. Um, Dr. Peters, is there anything else you would like to share kind of along those lines that you want your patients to know? Um, there's not really a lot of other information in terms of, you know, you get flooded with all these things and if you have concerns, you know, like Debbie said, you have a newborn, there's a lot of questions you might have, especially if it's your first baby, um, or if you have a, a five-year-old and they have symptoms and you're concerned they have coronavirus, it's important to reach out to us. We are available by phone. Our clinic, we do a lot, of, we do our most of our telemedicine visits in the afternoon. So if you call and you aren't able to get through, try again. And if you're not able to get through during our office hours, you know, let us know or call the hospital and we'll work it out. You know, this is a new event for all of us too and we wanna be there for your family. We wanna do what's right for you to stay safe. Okay. All right, well, it's not often that I get to say this in these times, but I do have a mark your calendar. So if you would like to help show support for the healthcare providers that are still here on the front lines, 
um, you know, trying to fight this battle on Monday at 645, um, go for a drive. So get out and you can bring the family along. You can get in your cars, head to the Winfield Rec Center. Um, we're gonna do a motorcade of vehicles driving down Fifth Street uh, around the hospital. We're gonna have the um, Winfield PD, uh, Fire EMS, and the Cali County Sheriff's Office also flashing their lights. It's just a way to show the people who are at the hospital. We'll have at seven o'clock is when we're gonna plan that drive to, drive through or drive around and um, you can make signs you know it it'd be a nice activity something you can do to get out of the house and we're gonna call it headlights for heroes so if you can't come join the motorcade though um, you know get creative with your family you can take take pictures at home with the with the headlights flashing and and post them on social media for us so um, be on the lookout for that information. And thank you again for joining us. If you have comments or questions, be sure to drop them here and stay tuned for uh, more guests next week. All right, take care.